our journey together, sometimes pressure creates diamonds or burst pipes. And I am proud to say that my younger brother is a diamond. He also trades full time, just like his older brother. And I have to introduce you guys to now the official Flop and Groper channel run by none other than my brother. Um, this video is going to knock out every TA pattern. Um, most of them that you should know. And we're just going to go ahead. I subscribed. Check out the video. You're going to want to subscribe. Now you have someone else also that's completely original on their own that's coming into the space to shit on everybody. So without further ado, I introduce the newest rookie of the year, best YouTuber, hands down rookie of the year. How's it going everybody? This is the Flop and Groper making a splash in the YouTube scene. And this is your Flop and Groper tutorials. This is my trade analysis series, chapter one. Now the reason why I made this video is to help out some of our new people in the Discord. We got over 350 new traders. Some of these people don't even know what the term DCA means. And uh, I just wanna go over some basic chart patterns, make sure we're all on the same page, make sure we're all seeing the same stuff. Quite frankly, I'm tired of every time I wanna learn a new trade pattern, I have to watch some YouTube video of some 50 year old motherfucker working at Charles Schwab with an expo marker and a whiteboard. So I felt like I'd just compile everything I know into a PowerPoint and present it to you guys. We're gonna get. Hey, I'm gonna have to go on mute for the rest of this video because there's no way I'm gonna be able to keep a straight face during this. This is absolutely brilliant. We just have to dissect this. First off, this is the official Flop and Groper icon. I love Flop and Groper tutorials. Absolutely amazing. I'm going on mute without further ado. New trade pattern. I have to watch some YouTube video of some 50 year old motherfucker working at Charles Schwab with an expo marker and a whiteboard. So I felt like I'd just compile everything I know into a PowerPoint and present it to you guys. We're going to get some good music playing. First things first, what's a flop and groper? Flop and groper is anyone private DMing us questions. That's what we have these videos for. That's what the comment section is for. That's what the Discord's for. Uh, flop and groper is anyone who thinks YouTubers are financial advisors. Anyone who does TA in our BitMEX chat when they're not qualified. Anyone in the BitMEX troll box. Any 14 year olds or chart experts in their mom's basement. And finally, any haters, because this is charity and we're doing this shit for free. Now, flopping groper isn't just a noun, it could also be a verb. One could be flopping and groping. One could have flopped and groped. In fact, everyone's probably flopped and groped at some point in their life. It's a humbling admission to admit that you're flopping and groping, um, as long as we're not using it in a derogatory sense. Uh, people make mistakes. Uh, sometimes people are underwater in a trade. Usually we'll coach people out of their mistakes. Um, and when people win, we give them congratulations. So make sure you join our Discord group. I'll put a link in the description. And uh, we're going to keep moving forward here. So the good thing about trade analysis is uh, we're dealing with patterns. So it's going to be 50 to 70% accurate. Most of the movements in a price chart can be described with patterns. Um, but it's not always the case. Sometimes, as with life, uh, things don't go as we expect. The patterns that we organize reality around don't always fully manifest. And uh, we have these periods of chaos where we don't really know what's going to happen. But uh, without knowing the patterns, uh, you're just going to be lost in the dark. So that's why you got to know these patterns. Using these guys, you can get clear entries and exits on trades. Um, that way you know exactly when to enter. That way you're in a trade for the least amount of time as possible. Uh, TA is just not as useful during volatile times or in highly manipulated markets. So sometimes you'll get a formation, but it'll be screwed up by some weird news, weird headlines, etc. 
uh, history does tend to repeat itself so if you see one pattern two pattern t uh, chances are there will be a third pattern hence the Chinese Ching Chong and uh, other patterns that uh, we have discovered in the crypto face community um, the only drawback is that it's based off of previous action only so we're basically doing our best to predict the future based on the past no one can ever predict the future one good thing about TA is that most of the information you'll ever need to trade in a market is in the price chart. So I may not fully agree with the cattle industry and it might not be around in like a decade or whatever and uh, there might be some bad headlines or statements or whatever. But if I go on cattle futures chart and there's a cup and handle and it's reached the neckline, we have a clear entry with a clear target and we can enter that trade and safely assume that we'll reach that target. So knowing these patterns can be very helpful. And last but not least on here, the trend is your friend, but the trend is only your friend until the end. So eventually you're going to be wrong, but um, knowing the trend is going to help you out. You have your continuation patterns and your reversal patterns. You got two main types of patterns. So your continuation patterns are your rectangles, triangles, pendants, wedges, flags, cups and handles. And your reversal patterns are your head and shoulders, double tops and bottoms, triple tops and bottoms, rounding tops and bottoms, and symmetrical triangles. Now the first continuation pattern we're going to cover is our rectangles. A rectangle requires that a prior trend already exists, as with all continuation patterns. And there must be at least four points of contact, minimum two equivalent highs and minimum two equivalent lows. So as you can see on this chart picture here, the trend is going up. It bounces in the rectangle range, exits, and continues the uptrend. In the bear scenario, it's already going down, enters your rectangle range, bounces in there, and comes down. The rectangle is a neutral pattern, which means it can be bearish or bullish. And uh, you want to trade after the breakout. You don't want to be in that rectangle trading because you don't know which way it's going to go. And you don't know, even know if it's a rectangle yet until after it's broke out. But uh, your target is just going to be the height of the rectangle added to the breakout point. Sometimes it'll retest as well. So we'll see here on our first one on the left, it actually tests the wrangle, uh, rectangle as a resistance first before bouncing down. And then it bounces into the rectangle. Bing, 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 bing. And then it leaves before finally retesting it as a support and then continuing your uptrend. On the right side, uh, it's a little cleaner, it actually just comes into the rectangle, bounces one, two, three, four times, and then continues your downtrend. Triangles are a little more complicated, so make sure you understand these guys. Um, the requirements for triangles are, once again, that a prior trend already exists. With ascending and descending triangles, uh, you want to have a clear resistance line. Uh, it could be resistance or support, depending on the triangle or in the scenario. And uh, the line has to be tapped at least once before the breakout. Your signal to trade is immediately after the breakout confirmation, and your target is going to be the height of the base added to your breakout point. Triangles are also a neutral pattern, just like uh, rectangles. And like I said, you got your three primary types, your symmetrical triangles, ascending triangles, and descending triangles. Here's a couple triangles. So since that you have your support line, that's that flat uh, support and resistance line there. In this case, it's going to be a resistance line because it's a bullish ascending triangle. And uh, the blue lines are your targets. So as you can see, it's the length of the base applied to the top of the triangle. And this was actually a uh, continuation trend. So you have your two triangles, one triangle, one after the other. And uh, you actually had a reversal after that big triangle. So we're going to get into reversal patterns later. Here's a descending triangle. Now this hasn't fully manifested yet, but I couldn't help but point this out. This is the BTC daily chart. If you zoom out a little bit and it looks like a big descending triangle. So we'll see if it, uh, this is big right here. All this stuff's big, but this is, this is big. Breaks through that bottom support. So a couple days ago, I took a screen cap of our most recent pr uh, price movement. Right now, it's August 22nd, 2018. But uh, yesterday, I took this little screen cap, and I was kind of predicting this uh, bearish ascending triangle. 
And the reason why I was predicting this is because I know that ascending triangles are typically continuation patterns. So we're already in the downtrend. So we see this triangle, chances are it's probably going to dump. But um, there was that false breakout from that BitMEX going in maintenance shit that happened. Pumped all the way to 6800. We had this massive short squeeze. So uh, we'll see. Uh, it hasn't been uh, validated yet. The, the breakout was pretty weak. So um, we'll see what happens. Here you have another triangle. This is a bearish descending triangle. It's descending because that top line of the triangle is sloped down. And it's bearish because it's continuing a bear market now this one was a little interesting because they had a false breakout it actually broke up um, anyone that had super high leverage or had weak hands probably got out of their trade and then they saw it dump down and they're like oh shit um, anyone who had good leverage and anyone who knows that triangles are a continuation pattern stuck to their guns and ended up hitting their target and winning that trade Next, we're still in triangles. This is going to be our wedges, pennants, and flags. Now, flags technically aren't triangles, uh, but they act kind of like how wedges and pennants do, so I included them in here. Just some bullet points to write down and remember. Wedges and pennants are basically like flags, but with an intersecting point. Pennants are just wedges, but with the shape of a symmetrical triangle and no slope. Flags are a brief pause in a trend. They can be sloped like wedges or slopeless like a pennant. And they're always rectangular in shape. And just a little tidbit, your rising wedges and flags aim up, signaling continuation of the dump. And your falling wedges and flags aim down, signaling continuation of the pump. So as you can see down here, we have pennants versus wedges. They're very similar, but uh, wedges aim the opposite direction of the trend whereas pendants are neutral. They're, they look more like a symmetrical triangle. And uh, here's a good little diagram comparing the three. Just comparing uh, bullish versus bearish flags. And then here's just some charting I was doing the other day while I was trading. As you can see, we have a bunch of wedges here. Wedges are probably the most common trade pattern that you'll see typically wedges that are aiming down will break up as you can see every single wedge that's aimed down ended up breaking up and then that one little wedge that i have kind of in the middle of that symmetrical triangle it was aiming up and it ended up breaking down so make sure you know your wedges spot the wedges when you see them and um, it's okay to edit your wedges as the chart unfolds because what matters is the truth you're not trying to like verify your initial prediction you're just trying to find the truth of what's happening right now in the moment. So you can always adjust your lines and uh, make sure that your wedges are as accurate as possible for future predictions. A final continuation pattern we're going to cover is your cup and handle. So the cup and handle is basically just a rounded bottom which goes up to a first peak followed by a small retrace of about one third to two thirds the depth of the first bottom. And your signal to trade is immediately after the neckline confirmation. Your target is just going to be the distance from the bottom of the trough to the first peak. It, it can also be inverted in a bearish continuation scenario. So here you go. Here's a cup and handle I found on the 30 minute chart back in February. As you can see, you have that rounded bottom followed by a peak and then a small handle and then it goes up. And I uh, put that little target line. That's just the height from the bottom to the first peak and I like kind of pasted it again at the breakout zone and as you can see the target was reached and even when it hit that target it retraced a little bit so it even tested it as a uh, resistance and the trend was continued see how it was going up before and after all right now we're on reversal patterns so sometimes you'll have a triangle which is a reversal pattern so it happens sometimes um, the breakout direction is only determined after the breakout has occurred. Typically these symmetrical triangles are caused by market indecision. It's basically when the bulls and bears have equal interest. And just like with the other triangles, your target is just your base added to your breakout point. Now sometimes it tests it as support or resistance, so don't freak out, don't have weak hands, trust your triangles. 
Here is the triangle reversal from back in April. This is our two hour chart. As you can see, it had these really high highs, really low lows, and eventually the volume starts decreasing until it gets all bottled up. And then finally you have your breakout. So anyone who had a buy order set at that breakout point made big money. Next one's your head and shoulders. So the requirements for a head and shoulders are that there must be a prior trend that already exists so that a reversal can take place. The anatomy of a head and shoulders is a left shoulder followed by a head and then a right shoulder. And the reversal is not officially confirmed until the neckline is reached and that new low is formed. Your target is a little more complicated than your other formations. It's the distance from the neckline to the top of the head subtracted from the total length of the neckline. So just one more extra step there. Um, sometimes it's been known to retrace confirming the neckline as support or resistance after as well. It is a top or bottom reversal pattern and it's one of the most popular ones out there. And your symmetry is not ideal, or it is ideal but it's not required. And your neckline can have a slight slope but you do want it to be a straight line. Here is your inverse head and shoulders. This was back in uh, June through July of 2018. You had your left shoulder, head, and right shoulder. And uh, once that neckline was confirmed, that was a huge trade signal, hence why it pumped up so hard. Anyone who jumped on that train made tons of money. Now we got your double top. So I'm pulling up that picture from before. We had that continuation pattern with those triangles, but uh, the trend is only your friend until the end. So we got this double top formation with two peaks that were within 3-5% to of each other and then we got a, a lower low after that so it ended up dumping and it took a while for the target to be reached but it did get reached the target is just going to be the distance from the pullback or neckline to the peaks an uptrend basically requires that higher highs and higher lows are formed so what a double peak does is it basically shows that a higher high failed to form and a, a lower low is formed. So that's a huge bear sign, a sign of reversal. BTC is kind of the king of ugly double peaks. Look at these ugly ass double peaks. That one on the top right looks pretty good, but these other ones look like fucking Effialtes from 300. They're like, Whoa! they're all fucking ugly and malformed. But um, either way, when you see these guys, that's a bad sign. That's a foreboding sign for BTC. Every single time, it's had a little bull run in the last year. This is what the top looks like. So keep an eye out for these guys. Next is your triple tops. Kind of like a head and shoulders, but that head is just squished. Um, it needs that prior trend in order for a reversal to take place. And the same as the double top, it's a 3 to 5% difference in the peaks. And a break above or below the pullback signals a completed triple top and bottom. I said double there, but it's triple. Um, so in a triple bottom, obviously a downtrend requires lower highs and lower lows. So a completed triple bottom signals that the price failed to create a lower low and instead creates a higher high, which is bad news bears. So your target, same as the double peak, is just going to be the distance from the pullback zone to the peaks. There's a little triple bottom I found. It was kind of hard to try to find a triple top and triple bottom. Typically, you'll see head and shoulders um, or double peaks, double bottoms. But um, I did end up finding a small triple bottom from February 24th to February 26th. And it wasn't like a big trend reversal. It was kind of like a small trend reversal. So these guys can be big or small. All right, and your final reversal pattern is your rounded bottoms and tops. The requirements are that a prior trend should already exist before a reversal can take place. There is a little bit of anatomy you got to know. It's a decline followed by a low, then an advance, and then a breakout. It must have a clear neckline, and the decline and advance do not have to be symmetrical, but they should be. Uh, it should be a nice rounded-looking shape. Your target is just going to be the distance from the neckline to the bottom of the trough subtracted from the length of the neckline. Sometimes it retraces, but um, 
The retracement isn't as important with these rounded bottoms because these are like macro trends. Um, they're best suited for weekly charts and they're really useful for very long-term trend reversals. Um, it's actually what ignited the bull run of 2016 to 2017, so I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is a weekly chart, so each candle is a whole week. So as you can see, this is from May 2014 to May 2016, and we had this huge rounded bottom, and once that neckline was reached, it was a huge buy signal. So you had a little bit of a pullback. It almost looked, like, looked kind of like a cup and handle. In fact, a rounded bottom is a part of the cup and handle anatomy, so they kind of go hand in hand. But um, as you can see, that's basically what started that huge bull run. So big sign to look out for. All right, so I want to keep this video nice and short. So uh, I'm going to end it there. Uh, that's it for chart patterns. I might make some videos uh, in the next week or so. But um, thank you for listening. Make sure you like and subscribe. And uh, this is my first video, so we'll see how people like it. And uh, if people like the format, I'll keep it going like this. All right, thank you guys. Thanks for listening. Wow, that was uh, really, really good. Really, really, really good. How do we go back here? I don't want to see this guy. So, I'm going to put the link to the video. Come on, I don't want to see this. There you have it, everybody. Okay, hang on. How's it going, everybody? All right, Flopping Groper Tutorials, Chapter 1, Chart Patterns. Link is in the description. Um, 10 out of 10. That's the best video I've ever seen describing any patterns. Knock them dead, guys. And he's he's got more coming. Make sure you like his video and subscribe so you can see more of him because he knows what he's doing. He's funny as hell. And um, in the rare... <laughs> It's hard to find good people on YouTube, and this one is great. So, yep.